My name is Gloria, and ever since I was a child, being energetic was my only strong suit. I never missed a day of school from elementary through high school, and after turning 20 and entering the workforce, I made it past 35 without any major illnesses. However, I started feeling a decline in my energy levels after turning 30, so I began exercising and watching what I ate, but that was about it. Also, I should say that being positive since childhood and not sweating the small stuff probably played a part in this. There was a time in my life when I felt incredibly down. It was when I fell seriously ill for the first time in my life, and in a way, it led to my divorce. Even I, as resilient as I was, lost the will to live, and it felt like everything was falling apart. But now, my health has stabilized, and I've come to terms with it, so I'm okay. The thing that led to discovering my illness was really trivial. After turning 40, I started feeling unusually hot, getting out of breath from minimal activity, and getting irritated over small things like symptoms of menopause. At first, I thought it was just aging, but as it began affecting my personal life, I started suspecting something else, although I didn't go to the doctor. Probably because I hadn't been to the doctor's office much before, I had this weird pride, or maybe I was just scared of finding out I was sick. But things got worse, like being completely drained just from a bit of shopping, lying on the couch for hours, losing focus, and nearly running a red light. My mother-in-law, Harriet, noticed something was off and insisted I go to the hospital. She said if it's an illness, it's better to start treatment early, and if it's nothing, then that's great. So reluctantly, I went to the doctor's office. Turns out it wasn't menopause, but Graves' disease, a condition where the thyroid gland acts up, causing symptoms like body heat, insomnia, irritability, and loss of strength, similar to menopause, and it's more common in women. If left untreated, it can lead to malnutrition and even heart failure or liver issues. And there's no complete cure yet. It requires regular checkups and medication. After the diagnosis, I started treatment with medication from the hospital. But my condition didn't improve right away. The ups and downs were severe, and I ended up taking a leave from work to recover. Fortunately, my boss and colleagues were understanding, encouraging me to take it easy and come back when I'm ready. I appreciated their support and planned to return, but sometimes the fear of being this way forever would hit me, and I'd find myself crying alone at night. My in-laws were always worried about me. During weekdays when Orlando was at work, they'd call to check on me, asking if I needed anything. Orlando's parents are truly wonderful people. They were always kind to me, but even more so after my illness was diagnosed, taking great care not to burden me. They kept phone calls short and never imposed or visited unannounced. I respect them like my own parents, but I tried to hide my struggles to avoid worrying them. But Harriet saw right through me. She told me, it's natural to feel anxious about being sick, but it's nobody's fault. What you need to do now is rest and improve your health. And the best way to do that is to rely on and cooperate with those around you. We might be old, but we consider you our daughter, so don't hesitate to ask for help. Her kind words made me cry, but then... Graves' disease? Never heard of it. Is that even a real illness? Well, whatever. Just make sure you keep up with the housework like before. Orlando said these heartless words, making me wonder if he was really raised by the kind parents he had. Before my illness was discovered, Orlando and I had no issues living together, but as soon as I started feeling unwell, his attitude completely changed. Far from being concerned, he acted as if I was a burden to him. I was too mentally and physically exhausted to respond. There were days when I was just too tired to move, and of course, I had to ask him to buy something or eat out. But then Orlando would sigh heavily making it obvious he was annoyed, complaining about how awful a wife I was, expecting a working husband to eat fast food. Looking back, I think it was his way of harassing me, knowing I was too sick to cook. He would almost always bring fried chicken, saying that I needed to eat to regain strength. I understood his logic, but when I said I couldn't eat, he'd sigh heavily and scold me for not appreciating his effort. If I couldn't clean and there was dust, he would yell about the dirty floors. When I was well enough to cook and he tasted the food, he'd complain. Hey, this tastes different from usual. Did you taste this? Are you losing your sense of taste, or is your cooking skill just declining? Either way, you need to do better. He'd eat it all, but then retreat to his room without a word. I realized something had to change, so I tried to discuss my illness and its difficulties with Orlando, asking for his support. You're really sick? I mean, you never even had a cold before, so suddenly being ill? I gotta say, it's hard to believe. What do you mean? I asked. He said, Well, it's suspicious. You were always healthy and now you're suddenly sick? I find it hard to trust. I raised my voice. 
How can anyone predict getting sick? Even I was shocked. Hmm. But still, your illness has nothing to do with me. If housework is too hard, you can do it when you feel better. I'll allow that. <sighs> I married you thinking I wouldn't have to care for you in the future since you were always healthy. This feels like a betrayal. Really disappointing. <laughs> Hearing him laugh as he said that, any remaining affection I had for him vanished. Orlando was never good with housework and wasn't very cooperative. But he was serious about his job and took care of the kids, so we managed. But I never expected him to be so indifferent, almost like it was someone else's problem. His terrible words left me speechless, and I ended the conversation there. He later realized his mistake and apologized, but I ignored him, and our relationship completely broke down from that conversation. Determined not to rely on such a man, I pushed through the pain to do the housework, and after finishing, I'd lock myself in the bedroom, avoiding Orlando as much as possible. At first he tried to please me with flowers and cakes, but when he realized my feelings wouldn't change, he stopped trying. Then in June of a certain year, when the weather was bad with continuous rain and low pressure making me feel worse than usual, Orlando said after returning from work, There's a wedding next Saturday of a relative living out of state. My parents and I are planning to go, but with your condition and the long travel, you don't have to. It's an overnight trip, so we'll be back Sunday evening. That's what Orlando told me when he came back from work. Out-of-state relatives? Do you have such relatives? I asked. He said he hadn't met them much. I wondered why we were invited to a wedding of relatives we barely knew and said so. Orlando got a little angry as he replied. Just because we're family, it's natural to keep in touch, isn't it? You wouldn't understand since you don't have parents, but that's just how it is. He said this in a slightly mocking tone and I finally got angry. Actually, I don't have parents. My parents divorced when I was young. I don't know my dad and my mom raised me alone. Her struggles took a toll and she passed away when I was 30. So it's true I don't have parents, but I'm not completely alone in the world. Orlando knows this. Yet he said that and I got incredibly angry. Don't you have any sensitivity? I thought. Orlando was taken aback by my fury. He tried to pass it off as a joke, but I yelled. There are things you just don't joke about. I was so angry that I exhausted myself. Eventually I was so tired that I just lay down. Orlando seemed a bit concerned, but he was busy preparing for a wedding we were supposed to attend. I was in no shape to go, so I asked if we could skip it. He flatly refused, saying, Absolutely not. When I asked why, he said, I don't know the couple well, but their parents have been a big help to my family for years. My dad told me they helped us financially in the past. We can't miss their child's wedding. I'm sorry, but I have to prioritize this. He said it lightly, so he clearly didn't feel bad, and in the end... Orlando left me behind, suitcase in hand. He even warned me not to contact him during the wedding, as it would be rude. If something happens, just call an ambulance or something, he said. This guy's hopeless, I thought. When he returns, we'll need to have a serious talk. I watched him leave without a word, thinking this would be the last time. But surprisingly, I felt lighter with Orlando gone. I even cracked a smile. Now with a whole day to myself, what should I do? I decided to relax for a few hours since I had no plans. Just as I was dozing off, the doorbell rang suddenly. It was around noon. I checked the monitor, and to my surprise, Harriet, who shouldn't have been here, was standing there. Why are you here? I panicked and rushed to the door. Harriet looked worried and asked, Are you okay? I was so shocked that I could only utter a confused, Huh? Harriet said she heard I was unwell. From who? I asked. Orlando, she replied. Then I asked her, What about the wedding? To which Harriet responded, What wedding? We stared at each other in silence, then decided to talk inside. Over tea, I asked, What brings you here today? She said, I recently bought a shelf, but Palmer hurt his back. I called Orlando to help assemble it, but he said he was busy this Saturday and suggested next week. When I asked why, he told me he was going out of state for a friend's funeral. So I asked about you, and he said you were unwell and bedridden. I offered to take you in or check on you, but... He said it might make you feel worse, so to just leave you alone. I was worried about leaving someone so sick alone, especially when Orlando said you were in bad shape. I was stunned by this completely different story. With trembling lips, I told her the reason Orlando gave me for leaving. Harriet was equally shocked, saying she had no idea. After a silent pause, I resignedly said, Maybe he's with another woman. Harriet's demeanor changed drastically. Hearing those calm, gentle Harriet utter the words, That bastard won't get away with this, was terrifying. After an infuriated Harriet asked, Can you come to the house now? 
I was taken to the in-law's house where I had to explain everything to Palmer, who was house-sitting. Palmer, understanding the situation, also got furious. He tried calling Orlando, but as expected, couldn't reach him. Palmer started getting annoyed and declared, I'm going to where he is right now. Of course, I stopped him and after several attempts finally got through to Orlando. I had put the call on speakerphone and Orlando, in a deliberately soft voice, said, I'm in the middle of a funeral right now. I'll call you back later. Palmer immediately retorted, What do you mean, forgetting us at the wedding? Orlando responded with a foolish, What? Huh? In a rather loud voice. Hearing this, Palmer said, You're speaking so loudly at a funeral. Well, I guess it's not a funeral. That's why you can talk like that. Calmly. But Orlando sounded shaken over the phone, stammering. Yeah, well... Pressing Orlando further, Palmer said, You told Gloria it was a wedding, right? But it's strange, I don't remember ever borrowing money from relatives. Orlando's excuses were all over the place, suggesting a misunderstanding or that he intended to go to the wedding, but prioritized a coinciding funeral instead. Palmer, tired of Orlando's excuses, exclaimed, Enough already, I know all about your lies. There's no point talking over the phone, just come back now. I'll listen to your excuses here, but I'm not forgiving you. I too was a bit scared listening to Palmer's rage. Orlando seemed to feel the same, but said he couldn't come back right away. When he mentioned bringing me home, I interjected. I'm right here, though. He exclaimed, in surprise. Huh? As he kept making nonsensical excuses, I said, Like Palmer said, there's nothing we can do for the phone. Come back now. There's no point talking about it here. Just come back immediately. Without listening to any more of Orlando's excuses, I hung up the phone. After that, I thought about going back home and then to my in-law's house the next day. However, my in-laws were worried about leaving me alone, so I decided to stay at their place. During that time, Harriet asked me what I was planning to do about Orlando. I told her that I was definitely getting a divorce. It's just not working out anymore. Then the next day, even though Orlando said he would be back by evening, he returned around 10 in the morning, looking incredibly awkward. A meeting with all four of us started immediately. And as expected, Orlando had gone on a cheating trip. He was with a woman in her 20s whom he had picked up at a bar. They hit it off after some light flirting and ended up having a relationship. This trip was apparently planned at her request. After hearing this, I asked him why he lied about something that involved his parents. He said he thought it would be troublesome if his affair was discovered while he was away. The parents-in-law, especially Palmer, was furious. Palmer was extremely angry, scolding Orlando, saying, You stupid son! He was angry not just because Orlando betrayed his wife, but because he used the excuse of someone's death and parents for his infidelity. Orlando, who's always been unable to go against his parents, especially Palmer, kept apologizing. But Palmer told him he was apologizing to the wrong person. Orlando then hurriedly apologized to me. But such a cheap apology was not enough for forgiveness. When I said we were getting a divorce, Orlando begged me not to, promising to change his ways. However, I told him, the way you treated and spoke to me when you learned about my illness was bad enough, but to think you would also cheat? I cannot forgive a man like that. Even if we tried to rebuild our relationship now, you might do the same or worse if you got sick. I don't want to become such a terrible person. So let's get divorced. He kept apologizing, ignoring what I said. I told him it's unforgivable, but he continued to apologize. So I got fed up and eventually Palmer kicked him out. After that, with the help of my parents-in-law, we started divorce proceedings with a lawyer. Surprisingly, the negotiations went smoothly and were settled without much trouble. However, the affair was only discovered by chance, and if Harriet hadn't come, I would have never realized Orlando was cheating. There was almost no evidence of the affair, so the compensation from the other woman was very minimal. But receiving compensation was also a way to prove that the other party was at fault, so I accepted it, thinking it was enough to know that they were guilty. After all, who would want a man who cheats on his sick wife? Orlando was just seen as a wallet, and after everything was settled, he was dumped by his affair partner, which made me laugh. Even after divorcing Orlando, I kept in touch with my parents-in-law. Harriet visits me about twice a month at my new place, and I occasionally visit the in-law's house. It's nice that we've kept our good relationship. Orlando was disowned by his parents and banned from their house. They were so angry and disgusted with him, saying, You're no son of ours. We disown you. Go wherever you want. When Orlando heard this, he was shocked. He didn't expect to be disowned. He tried to come back once, thinking they were still family, but Palmer chased him off, saying, Didn't I tell you not to come here? And threw water on him. Harriet told me about it. 
but the parents-in-law always cared for me, so even though I was down for a while after the divorce, I got over it pretty quickly. My health has been improving since the divorce, and I'm planning to return to work soon. I still have to deal with medication and checkups for my illness, but I'll overcome it with my naturally positive attitude.